Did you understood now? What are the next next states? Next state is uh, register acknowledgement simply, and then mm. write data, write acknowledgement, and then read data, read acknowledgement. Read data, read acknowledgement. Okay. And and there is uh, another two state yeah. like uh, stop wait means before okay. going to a completely stop state, we are in a stop wait state. Hmm. And okay. then after stop state. Uh, okay. So what here what is one condition concept, we can write for? Hmm? A stop a stop state uh, like uh, same condition. Uh, mm. For SDL and SCL, we check SDL, SDL must and SCL be positive H, SDL must H. be positive H, and SCL must be yes. constantly high. Constantly high means SDL mm. go from low to high, and uh, SCL is a remain in high. Yes. So others, can anyone tell me what is the condition for clock stretching? What condition we can write for clock stretching? What condition? Clock stretching. Have you understood the concept of clock stretching? Yes, ma'am. I, I understand. Ma'am, that Whatever SCL happens. should go. Hello. Mm. Mm. Ma'am, that, that SCL should go low. Like clock stretching, like uh, when we are com communicating. Oh. When we want to stop the communication at that time, like we will low down that SCL clock. That is clock stretching. Clock stretching, okay. like ma'am, no. uh, simply if if master run at a higher frequency means uh, uh, data writing is much faster than the slave. Slave is um, means uh, find found difficult to read the data faster. So uh clock remains in a low state so mm. that slave can accept the data and then uh clock go to high means that the concept of a clock is stretching a stretching means why keep the need to clock go low? at the low level because why slave go low? if the if the clock in a low state means slave getting more time to accept the data without the loss of any data and the transfer will happen easily okay okay so actually right, uh, we need to make constant the slave should be in a constant why because master is keep on uh, sending some transfers so master is keep on sending some transfers so master is sending fifth transfer slave is also working at the fifth transfer but immediately master is transferring some sixth transfer or seventh transfer but slave need to complete it's a fifth transfer okay so yes, a slave yes, till yes. now it completed four transfers so four trans here two, slave two. immediately need, need to go for sixth transfer but slave is not ready to accept the sixth transfer because it, it didn't yes. complete the fifth transfer. So that it time comes. what we need to do, we need to make clock stretching low for some time. It should be low. So it is low means it doesn't accept for the next transfer. Once the present transfer is completed, that means once fifth transfer is completed, then it can make high. Whenever it is high, the sixth transfer is allowed. To the slave so it will work on the sixth transfer again like that so whenever the transfer is not completed we can stretch the clock stretch the clock is nothing but we are delaying okay yes, so how many of you not gone through the previous session whatever i have shared how many of you didn't went through the session did everyone gone through the session did everyone understood the i2c concept If you have any doubts, please let me know. Today we will discuss how to design that FSM and also uh, state, I mean, uh, verification, system verification, okay.
also see here. Excuse me, ma'am. Um, hello, ma'am. Yeah, please. Hello, hello ma'am. Yep. Yeah, yeah, go, go on. Hello. What? Uh, yes, ma'am. I want to ask uh, that uh, arbitration concept. Like uh, okay. when that uh, master is initiating that address for the slave, like we, uh, like you said in that video, you said that uh, 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 that master who satisfy that start condition first, he will able mm -hmm. to initiate that transaction. That I got it. But mm -hmm. when you are uh, explaining by bit by bit, like you took some bits and you are doing that iron operation. I didn't or I didn't told whenever the master satisfied with the start condition, I didn't told that point. For if there are three number of masters, uh, we have some arbitration concept like a uh, end wire. Okay, suppose if you use uh, end operation uh, between the three masters, uh, based on which master get the bus. Okay, that master will want the bus and will start uh, uh, passing the data. Okay, it doesn't depends on either start condition or stop condition. It totally depends on arbitration concept, whatever the functionality we are using. So, ma'am, there we are using some like and and logic. Mm. Mm. Okay, yes. okay, okay. So, okay, so, so like which master satisfy that and logic? Uh, mm. Yes. How we are doing the end that, logic? Uh, suppose. Uh, Master one, master one, master two, master three is there. Suppose zero, one, zero. We will perform end operation for these three. Zero, one, zero. What is the output? Uh, zero. So common value is zero. So one is different. One will get the uh, bus. Okay. Or you can use the NAND based also. Or arbitration concept is our wish. Okay, we can write any logic as per the design engineer. We can write any logic. Okay. So what is zero and zero? Like that. Zero one zero is the transmission bits. Address bits transmission for master. Bit. Based on that, we will do the operation. I mean, uh, end operation, wire end. Because uh, it work oh. with the pull down, pull up registers, right? Uh, that's why we use uh, this operation. If it is a pull zero, pull down means a zero. So that will be one the bus. Okay. okay. So here uh, coming to the FSM for I2C. Uh, so if you, if anyone didn't go on, ma'am, ma just please complete that. Yeah, tell. Ma'am, one question regarding same thing, arbitration. Okay. Uh, arbitration is like uh, when different masters try to connect to slave, right? Mm, actually, they, one master to one slave. We will connect one master to one slave. Okay, if there are means multiple masters, uh, mm, there. Means they try let to. your question complete or let me complete my answer. Okay, ma'am. Tell me. Complete your answer. Tell me, what, what is your question? Tell me. Okay, question. So, uh, my understanding about arbitration is like multiple master try to connect slave, one slave. And hmm. master generate the address bits, right? Yes. And if three master, like you are saying in a shared video, they generate the three different addresses. Hmm. Okay. And then uh, we, um, you uh, try to explain with the end concept and who are winning the bus. Hmm. Right, ma'am. But my yes. uh, confusion is about if three master different uh, generate the three different addresses. So address is different and try to connect to slave slave with the one addresses in these three addresses address, which actually same with the slave addresses. It's already going to connect. 
which so why slave we, why already we have slave already slave? have that same address and master is going yes. to connect with the same address huh? yeah ma'am my question means then, this uh, is a concept if slave is not accepting that address slave will send simply acknowledgement signal if slave is not av available for that particular address means slave will send the acknowledgement signal no my, my doesn't question is ma'am like Hmm. And that's uh, understand man. My question is like a M1, M2, M3, three master generate the address hmm. A, B, C. Right, ma'am. Hmm. And slave has uh, their address A. Means for hmm. this concept, it's uh, like simply slave going to attach with master one. Means uh, we generate hmm. the address A. So why we need mm -hmm. actually the end and or concept because uh, ma three master generate the three different uh, addresses. So why we need the concept of who are okay. we need the bus? Um, three masters generating three different addresses. Okay, within yes. these three addresses, which one, which master need to send the address first? Which address, which master need to send the first? That's what and I am asking to you. What is the complete first? Hmm. Hmm. Your question That's... is if there are A, B, yes, C, slave already, yes, slave is uh, slave need to get the address of A, then master is uh, oh, sending sorry. address A, then what is the requirement of address B and C, like in terms of arbitration? You are asking that question, right? Yes, ma'am. Why we need the uh, and in all type operation at the mastering. Okay. Why? Because we don't know the priority right here. Uh, maybe the B have highest priority or C have highest priority. And the three are here. Uh, like uh, uh, they are, they want to pass at a time. Okay. They want to send the data at a time to the slave. But at a time, three masters cannot connect with the slave. And also, we cannot know which master we need to pick. For that purpose okay. only, we are using the arbitration. We don't know which master to pick manually. Manually, okay. we can't Understood. pick. That's why we are using this arbitration concept. And we are selecting any one of the master and passing, connecting with that bus. Okay, ma'am. But there the is a question now? like... Again, okay. yes, I am got uh, completely understand, ma'am. Uh, my second question is like, after the arbitration process means, uh, mm -hmm. let suppose M two winning the bus means mm -hmm. finally M two is a uh, sent uh, to the uh, address data to slave. Mm -hmm. Just suppose, ma'am, slave is not uh, not at that address. Slave is not there. Mm. So it's again come to uh, arbitration process like uh, again M1, yes. M2 and M3. <clears throat> yes. Again, it will so do the again, arbitration. Ag again, it will do arbitration M1, M2, M3, then is discarding M2, right? And then yes. arbitration between M1 and M3. M1, M3. Yes. Completely understood, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ma okay. Okay. Uh, if you have any doubts, uh, you can ask me later. Others, others also try to ask your doubts, clear your doubts itself, uh, here itself. Uh, still any doubts or rem uh, remind, just post in the group. Okay. If you post your doubts in the group, anytime we can discuss, right? If you want to discuss all in the session means uh, we won't get the time. Okay. Time will be not sufficient. So just share your doubts in the group so I can respond. Others also can get your doubts. Okay. So coming to the design part here, I think everyone got the FSM, different states. So um, module, I2C slave. I2C slave is the design, master is the test venture. So master initiate the transfer, slave will receive the transfer and it will store the data. So like that. So reset signal, SCL, serial clock, SDS serial data, data out, address out. Uh, so all are declared, input, output, 
and SCL and SD are bidirectional signals. Okay, uh, master to slave and slave to master bidirectional signals. So, so that's why declared as a in out. Okay, and what are the temporary signals out there? Wire, write read, uh, and reg address in reg write data, read data, CDL in parallel out data, PSO data, count for counting the eight clock cycles for address and the data and present state next state whenever we are writing the fsm we need the present state and next state and then sd out directional enable this reg you already know for writing the uh, fsm we need to create some memory okay and then uh, Enable signals, reg, uh, write enable, read enable. So whenever you want to do write operation, we use the write enable for read operation, read enable. Start uh, signal, stop signal, count enable, serial input, parallel output enable, CPO, PSO enable, CPO valid, stop uh, valid. All these signals are required. Why? Because based on these control signals remaining operation will be executed okay all the operation you can control based on the control signals only that's why these signals are required if you if you don't need these signals just take a simple fsm for i2c protocol and try to implement okay as you are level if you are fresher okay just uh, write a simple fsm design just a sm uh, simple states uh, like ideal state start uh, um, address acknowledgement write read operation data write read data and stop signal just these states enough try to get actual functionality with these statements what is the actual functionality we need to check a write and read operation whatever we are writing the data to the particular address is it reading properly or not to the particular address we just need to know that okay so you can write simple fsm design and you can check or else if you are if you want to concentrate more on verification means just take any design simple design and try to develop the verification program okay another parameter we need to declare all the states here itself ideal state start reg address acknowledgement write write acknowledgement read read acknowledgement stop or stop it so if you declare all the state values like this means uh, so it is easy to write in the fsm okay and assign sda is equal to directional enable because here we are writing the bidirectional data right uh, so if directional enable is high sda out is getting otherwise high impedance and data out equal to rd data so first we are considering rd data a uh, temporary variable and then we are assigning to the main data out assign address out comma write enable what is the address eight uh, seven bit comma write data so address input is the eight bit so total eight bit data is assigning here concatenation operation okay and then now uh, Always at the rate of negative SCL uh, clock or positive reset, asynchronous reset. If reset is high, present state equal to ideal state, else present state equal to next state. You know, uh, common thing for every finite state mission. Okay. Next, always at the rate of negative clock SCL. Normally we put the clock, but here we put SCL signal or passage reset in now. begin if reset is high count equal to zero else if count enable is high count equal to count plus one this is the counter logic okay else count equal to zero always at the rate of passage scl or process reset begin if reset is zero if write enable is high then can you tell me what is the write operation and read operation? What is the logic for any memory or FIFO or a, a, like a, any for any memory? How can we write the write and read operation?
write and read operation is like first come to write operation. Write operation when the data move from master to slave. Means a master will consider the processor and slave consider to memory. Then mm -hmm. the data movement from master to slave side, it's considered as a write data, writing. And uh, when the data movement from slave, it's memory. And uh, to the mm, processor or master side, it's called the reading data. Okay. From the particular register, we Only can Only one say person data. available in the session now. What about others? Only one person available in the session? Divyani, Ujwala, Ashwant, Omkar, Shivani, Shekhar. What about you, Surya Kumari? We already discussed the FIFO, right? How can we do write and read operation? How to write the statement? For write operation and read operation. Okay, see, for write operation, we need to do mem of address out equal to write data. Okay, because we are writing the data into particular address. For read operation, read data equal to mem of uh, address okay next uh, start condition stop condition so what is the start and stop condition as per the i2c protocol sda it should be positive edge and ssel must be constantly high okay so okay ne first negative edge for start condition negative edge um, for stop condition positive edge Always at the rate of negate SDA, begin start equal to zero initially. And if SCL and start enable is constantly high, SCL should be one and start enable equal to one. Whenever start enable equal to one, start is one. Okay. For stop, SDA must be positive edge and stop equal to zero and SCL must be constantly high and enable must be high stop equal to zero in that condition so these are the two conditions we can write for start and stop condition and next um, fsm one is for control path another is for next state output okay so see here always at the rate of what is this uh, sensitivity list what happens if we put uh, star in the sensitivity list, can anyone answer? All input will activate at the same time. Huh? Mm. So, by default, all inputs will be uh, given here. Okay, so whatever the input is uh, changing automatically, the value will be reflected. Okay, no need to mention all the inputs in the sensitivity list. So first state will be the ideal state. So state ideal. So in the ideal state, what will happen if start is high? Next state will be start state. Else the next state will be ideal state as per the final state mission. No need to explain clearly all these things because you already know very log, right? You have joined for a verification. So design, no need to explain, I think. But still, I will give like brief explanation. Next state is the start state. So in the next start statements, automatically next state will be the register address. Here we are writing only what is the next state, what is the present state. We are not defining any functionality here. Okay. Next state address, register address. If count equal to 0 to 7, if count equal to 0 to 7, next state will be the register address or else if count is not less than 7, if count is equal to 7 means next equal to reg address acknowledgement. Okay. So, for a present state is register state acknowledgement. So, what we have written here, if 
SDR out equal to zero, begin if read write signal equal to zero. Read write equal to zero means, sorry, write read equal to zero means next state is a write state. Else next state will be read state. If write read state equal to one means next state equal to zero. Write read equal to zero means next state equal to write state. Else next state will go to stop state if condition is not satisfied. Next present state is write state. Present state is write state means if begin is if begin count equal to zero to less than seven then next state will be right state because count should be rotate up to zero to seven right uh, once it complete uh, zero to seven then it will move to the next state acknowledgement state <coughs> acknowledgement state or else until count equal to eight bit it should be rotate in a same loop because eight bit data it should write did you understood this point that's why we use eight count equal to eight did you got the point Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So I did write data. Count is initially zero. Once count reaches up to eight, then only we can go to the next state, either stop state or read state. If count equal to not eight means it should be rotated in the same loop only. Count equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 until that. That's why we have written this condition. Okay. Next state will be the right acknowledgement. And then present state is the right acknowledgement. Begin if SDR out equal to 0, then next state will be the state rate address. Okay. State rate address. It, it will go to the next address or else stop state. Okay. Next state is the read state. If count equal to 0 to 7, it will be in state read or else read acknowledgement state. Okay. And um, the state read acknowledgement. If SDA equal to 0, data equal to 0, next state will be the address, register address or else stop state. And if present state is stop state, if stop is high, then next state will go to the, okay, it is, this one is stop wait state. I mean the sense wait. You can mention clearly as a wait also. So until a stop is high, it will be in a stop wait state only because it, is, it doesn't get the stop, uh, stop signal. Uh, so if stop is high, then it will go to stop state or else if start is high, start state and present state is state stop if start is high next state will be the start state or else stop state by default ideal state what happens if we don't mention the default statement in the case or if else statements what happens if we don't mention the default statement in the case or if else uh, one problem is arise called latch inferred means of okay. keeping the same state uh, they already create a latch so that's the problem okay so if we don't use the default statement main problem is the latch so some unwanted latches unwanted latches in the sense so some unwanted circuit will be generated for that particular yes. state that's why we need to put ideal uh, default statement okay Next, always at the rate of um, star case present state. Here we will give all uh, control states, uh, control signals. Based on the control signals, remaining functionality will be work because all the outputs are dependent on enable signals only, right? If write enable is high, then write operation. Read enable is high, read operation. Count enable is high, count operation. Uh, parallel in serial enable is high, then it will perform parallel to serial. 
uh, if CPO is enable is high, then it will perform CPO operation. Like that, everything is dependent on enable only if you observe all the signals here also. Okay, that's why first we need to uh, update the control signals here. So, in the state ideal, what are the control signals must be high? All control signals must be zero except start enable. So here start enable should high. Once start enable is high, then only it will go to the start state and it will do the start operation like that. So in the start state, which one should be high means nothing. And in address count enable should be high. Count enable equal to one, then only it will do start the count operation, right? That's why. And in address acknowledgement, direction enable is high because which direction it need to send that acknowledgement by directional, right? Uh, so master or slave. So here directional enable is high. And then uh, in the state, right? Count enable should be high, remaining all or zero. See, you can go through point to point. Try to understand clearly point to point, okay? So I'll share you the codes also. Don't do any... Uh, changes in this link if you want to save the code you can save into your playground but don't do any changes here okay and uh, write acknowledgement signal so here write enable must be high and direction enable is high state read operation read enable should high write enable should high and count enable high parallel in serial out should be high and read acknowledgement stop wait stop signal should be high here in the stop state all signals must be zero by default all or ideal all or zero okay and uh, for parallel in serial out serial in parallel out, we have written the logic here okay mostly for piso and cpo we have lot of logics. We can use any of the logic, but whatever the simple one is there, we can use that, okay? Because in these type of protocols or projects, uh, uh, we, need, we must need to consider single, like single line. We already discussed, right? How to implement full adder in single line, multiplexer in single line, registers in single line, like that. Uh, here, if you observe, Always at the rate of pausage, serial clock. If reset is high, data equal to zero. CPO enable is high. Then CPO data equal to SDA comma, SDA data of seven down to one, shifting. Okay, first SDA data, comma, remaining all data is shifting serially. And then uh, for PISO, PISO also same. PISO data equal to read data of count plus one count plus one means one by one count equal to zero to eight so like that it will be sent in a serial format okay so for this design i have written the very log program also uh, just go through the very log program okay so here we have written task based verification task based verification means normally in very log program how we will write um we use uh, like a um, data input equal to some value data write enable equal to some value read enable directly we will mention some values right but here uh, uh, first initialization task uh, clock equal to zero sd equal to zero reset equal to zero and then reset task reset is high after some time reset is zero okay and then now uh, always at the rate of clock equal to not clock clock has generated and then start generate start condition what is the start condition initially sda is a high after the next positive edge of the clock sda is zero like the stop condition initially sda equal to zero after next positive edge of the clock sda equal to one like the right address for right address we have generated some right data uh, right address uh, 8 bit double one double zero triple one zero so in this uh, double one zero uh, will be uh, G, uh, triple one zero mm, wait uh, this 8 bit in the 8 bit this uh, double one zero zero triple one this will be the address last bit is there right zero zero means right operation here we have written 
zero means right operation, right? See here, uh, left side, 125 line. Right read equal to zero means right operation. So here last bit is the zero. So it will perform the right operation, okay? And then uh, uh, here, uh, SDI equal to temporary SDI data. SDI will get temporary because we st taken this value into temporary variable and then shift right for read, uh, read address, okay? For read, uh, reading the address, uh, same address we are taking double one double zero triple one. But last bit is the one. Last bit is the one means read read operation. Okay, so that is the read of read address, write address, and read uh, write data. So what is the write data? Temp equal to double one zero one double one zero one. That is the write data, and read data no need to give. We need to check the read data. Okay. So in the next initial begin, we are calling initialization task, reset task, start generation task, write address, write data, read address, read data. So you can do uh, verification. So run and check the output. Open uh, waveform. Write enable is high, read enable is high. <clears throat> Write data equal to 0, 1, 0, 1. Where is the read data? Write data equal to 1, 0, 1. Read data is 7, 8 bit data. Read data double one zero triple one zero one. Write um, data is one zero one, right? And read enable is high. So here, read data is getting here. Write data equal to. One. 
67 67 Okay, now it is getting C. Address out 67, 67. So whatever we have generated here, check in here also. You can open in hexadecimal, then you can understand. So address is 67 and input is uh, DD, okay? So 67 address and here is the data out DD, okay? And um, so here also, write data, write data equal to DD. So here write enable is high at this point, see here cursor. At this point, write data is a DD. At this point, read enable is high. Write read equal to 1. Write read equal to 1 means read operation. So at this point, read enable is high. So getting D out as a DD. Okay. Before CE also address input, but CE is not reflecting because uh, we are not reading that particular address. Only DD is reading here. Okay. That's why we got, uh, because here read, right enable is high at this point only. Right read equal to high. So reading this particular data, DD. Okay. So that's why DD here also you can check. Read data equal to DD whenever read enable is high at this point. SDI out is equal to high. Did you observe here output everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So he, now we'll see how to write the program in system Verilog. Okay, I think everyone got the clarity of I2C protocol design. So can you tell me how to write the program in system Verilog? What are the different blocks gen, uh, like a uh, uh, what is the SP architecture, test bench architecture? Ma'am, inside environment, uh, there will be a generator, driver, scoreboard, monitor. And uh, environment will be in under test and test will be under in the test bench. What is the generator? What it do? and driver monitor scoreboard can anyone answer from uh Ujvala, Ishwant, Omkar, Shivani, Som Shekhar can you tell me what Ma is mean by yeah generator it will generate the random value okay driver will accept the random value ma'am Okay, what is the communicator between generator and driver? Transaction. A mailbox. Mm, okay. What is the difference between transaction and the mailbox? Mailbox, it will store temporary, ma'am. It doesn't okay. have standard protocol. Mm hmm transaction whatever the inputs and outputs data those will comes in the transaction okay others any answers verification badge Shekhar, can you tell me? Okay. 
Okay, see here. So in system with log, there will be generator, driver, monitor, and scoreboard. Generator generate the random value and that will be sent to the driver. The packet data will be converted into the pin level data from driver to the DUT. The communication between the generator and driver is through mailbox. So mailbox works like a uh, FIFO, uh, just uh, to store the data temporarily. And um, from the DUT, whatever the data is there, that data will get to the monitor. So generator to driver, driver to DUT through interface. Through the interface, the data will send to the monitor, monitor to the scoreboard. These four components will be connected in the top level environment. In the top level with interface, uh, it will be connected in a test. Test to the test and DUT in the top level is to the test. The top level is test bench. Okay, so this is what the actual test bench system with log test bench architecture. So first we'll go to the generator block here. Okay, so first class generator rand transaction a tr so what is the transaction class in transaction class we will mention all the inputs and the outputs right so here we are mentioning all the inputs and outputs so whatever the randomizing data is there whatever we need to randomize that data we need to connect with uh, we need to declare with the rand okay so if you don't declare with the rand those data will not be randomized so that's why all inputs must be declared with the rand okay can anyone tell me what is the difference between rand and rand c what is the difference between rand and rand c Ma'am, rand is for I... randomizing the values and whereas rand c also randomizing values but in a certain cycle Mm -hmm. What is the use of RAND C? What is the use of uh, generating in a circle? Um, in RAND, like same value uh, can generate uh, multiple times, but, but in RAND C, the different value in a particular range will generate. So, like uh, oh. in RAND C, same value is not generating again and again. Yes. So by using the rand, we it will generate the repeated values because if you generate the repeated values, what is the drawback? Uh, so we can we cannot check with other scenarios. The, if you generate non-repeated values, means we can cover all the scenarios, right? Uh, if if it generate single time or multiple times, it's same. Okay, so that is waste of scenarios. Uh, in that uh, place, we can generate so many multiple scenarios if you use rand c okay so rand c will generate a non repeated values until it reach its a uh, limit okay if it is a 8 bit uh, sorry if it is a 3 bit if you consider total 8 combinations but still you are running 10 number of uh, uh, repeat times means it will generate 10 combinations but first it will cover all 8 combinations then only it will generate the repeated value okay but if you take a rand, it will gen of it from starting onwards, it will generate multiple values, same values, multiple times. And next, uh, bit seven down to zero data address, all whatever the outputs are there, and the inputs are declared here. And constraints. So, what is mean by constraint? What is mean by a constraint? Verification batch. Can you answer? Ma'am, for proper values of write enable and read enable. For proper values of write enable and read enable, where you studied that? Did I told that thing? 
do we need to generate only write enable or read enable in the constraint? I am controlling the randomization, man. Controlling the randomization. Okay. See, basically, uh, okay, controlling the randomization is correct. Okay. So basically, uh, whatever, suppose here, write address is a 8-bit data and read address is a 8-bit data. Write address, write data is 8-bit. Okay. But uh, no need to generate 8-bit address, right? 8-bit address means there will be 2 power 8 number of combinations it will generate. Okay. Uh, 2 power 8 number of combinations are not required. We won't, uh, we don't need all the uh, scenarios. We may need only 0 to 100 scenarios, some 1000, 1000 uh, to 5000 scenarios like that in that range. Okay. So by using the constraint, we can generate our required values, only the required values. No need to generate all the values. But if you see in Verilog HDL, uh, there is a no constraint concept. Okay, whatever the size is there, all the combinations it will generate, but we can write a simple statements there. But in system Verilog, we have special topic called constraint. So particular value, whatever the need, okay uh, according to your scenario whatever you want to verify according to your need you can generate particular values okay that is a constraint we can control the randomization okay so see here uh, for right address we can generate all 8-bit data 2 power 8 combinations but here particularly right address equal to some this value we are generating read address equal to this value write data equal to this value. So particularly that scenario we are generating and we can check only that scenario, okay? Like that you can generate multiples of five or odd values, even values or within the range from 100 to 1000, like that also you can generate, okay? And then function void display, just displaying what is the address, what is the data and function void check just design is pass or design is fail here we are writing checker okay we simply call as a checker right normally in the scoreboard uh, we use the checkers that means now we will check uh, with the theory value and practical value as i told right uh, our output will check with the golden difference values uh, whether it is uh, correct or wrong in very long manually we will check okay manually in the sense whatever the output is generated we will uh, get some theory values manually and we can check whether it is correct or wrong but here we can write the checker see here how what what uh, we have written address out must be equal to write address of seven down to one address out is the read address it, it must be equal to seven down to one because seven down to one is the main address right and data out equal to write data our read data must be equal to write data read data is nothing but data out so whenever this condition is passed this condition is success then it will display design is passed or else it will display design is failed okay you can write this checker here or also in scoreboard okay here also you can write but here we have call c tr dot check tr dot check means for transaction class, we have created a transaction TR object and calling this function. Like that also we can do. Okay. So coming to the generator block. So whatever the transaction class is there for this transaction class, we have created the TR object and also a mailbox gen to drive mailbox function new mailbox to gen, um, gen to drive just uh, creating the component uh, here we create the class component here and task right address so here is the right address so how we are doing uh, basically in Verilog how we do uh, did uh, um, for right address uh, we just kept temp equal to this value and also send to the SDA and uh, shifting the temp value like this we did right here also we won't generate, uh, we won't give some hardcore value, but we do the randomization, okay? 
So create a tr equal to new. Tr equal to new means creating the transaction object. Tr dot randomizer. In system where log we use like this only, right? In very log we use uh, some a equal to dollar random, b equal to dollar random. There we use the dollar random for any input variable. Okay. But here we use the randomize method. Tr dot randomize. So that it will do randomization for all transaction class. So whatever the class variables are there here, all the variables will randomize by using one single method because we have created the object for the transaction class. So whatever included in that class, everything will be randomized through the object. Okay. So that's why. Um, so tr dot uh, sda equal to tr dot write address of i. So we are passing the write address of i means 0 to 7. We are passing to the sda. Okay. And dollar display printing that. And gen2 drive dot put off tr. What is that put off tr? Mailbox. By using the mailbox method, put method, we are putting the data into the mailbox that data we will get in the driver right that is the uh, concept here and write data task just go through the write data task and read address task and in the main task we are calling write address write data read address okay dollar display so this is the generator block okay In the generator block, we just do the randomization of data and send to the mailbox. That's that's it. And in the driver, we will uh, get the data from the mailbox and we will send to the DUT. Okay, see here. Do you know what is this path? Actually, um, can you tell me what is the difference between interface and virtual interface? For all batches I have covered, what is the difference between interface and virtual interface? Um, virtual interface is dynamic in nature and interface is static in nature. Okay, why do we create virtual interface? Where well, class is uh, dynamic using, and uh, uh, module is are static. Using classes. Mm -hmm. We are using classes in that uh, test bench. System very log test bench or UM test bench. We are using classes, so classes are dynamic in, in nature. That's why we need to we need a virtual interface so that we can connect uh, that test bench to DUT to virtual interface. Okay. Okay. So. So here generator driver monitor scoreboard. So driver to DUT. Here is the interface. Through the interface, we are sending the data to DUT. So in Verilog HDL, if you want to connect with the DUT to test bench, what we do directly, simply we write the interface called DUT. Okay, because it's a module, we can write in a simple line. But here we are using everything in a classes. So here class, uh, here is a class, driver uh, monitor is a class. Everything is a class-based verification, right? Because these all are dynamic in nature. That means we can uh, create at any uh, at runtime. Okay, we can change it in the runtime, whatever the objects or we can assign the values, everything. But here dynamic in nature means, the, uh, sorry, static in nature means those are fixed. Okay. So for that purpose, this interface is not dynamic in nature. That is a static in nature. That's why we create one virtual interface to this physical interface. Okay. Which can uh, uh, do, which can uh, um, successfully implement with the class-based verification. Okay. So before that, see here interface.sv. 
So in interface, normally we use interface I2C interf input logic clock reset logic SGA output address out data out. Why do we use the logic here? Can you tell me? Why it needs to it? cover all the scenarios. Like a four bit state. Logic is a four bit state. So that's why it won't undergo to any undefined state. Mm -hmm. In place of logic, can we write something, some other? In Verilog, what we read, uh, written? Reg and wire only we will write, we'll write. Okay. But why can't we write reg and wire here? Reg and wire, it will take only zero or one. But logic will take four states, like undefined state, zero state, one state. Okay. Suppose if we don't require the uh, X state and the Z state, as you told, it is uh, four uh, four uh, states it can accept. Then we can write reg or vira. No, we can't. Why? Because it is a uh, uh, class based system, right? Anyhow, it will undergo any undefined state or I impedant state. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Actually, uh, in Verilog, we do use reg or wire because there we use some procedural assignment, continuous assignment. For continuous, we need to write the reg. If you use the procedural, we need to follow with reg. Re Continuous wire for a procedural wireage, right? So to avoid that confusion, simply we use the logic here. Logic means it replaced with the reg and wire data type. So just to avoid that confusion for all, whether it is an input or output variables, we just put the logic, okay? And clocking block and the mode port. Clocking block and mode for, for just synchronization between driver to DUT and DUT to monitor. And here we use the mode port driver and monitor. Okay. So whatever the signals we are we are getting, uh, we need to get from the DUT. We need to take from interface only. Whatever the signals we have declared in the interface through that interface signals we need to connect with our dut okay so as you are passing the data here from driver to dut so the interface have the signals right so through these interface signals you need to pass okay that's why if you observe in the driver we have taken this path tick define DRIVF is the name of this macro. I2CBIF is the name of the virtual name of the interface. Uh, see here. I2CBIF is the name of the I2C interf is the name of the interface. Dot driver is the name of the interface mod port and driver CB is the name of the clocking block so through this path we are accessing those signals okay if you don't want to put this macro here you can mention this total path for each signal here see here blue color 47 line tick d or iv f if is there so that is the macro okay by default we kept that macro because the path is mentioned here so if you put that macro automatically, the path will be taken here. If you don't want to put that macro, you can directly mention the path here. Okay. So here I2C VIF is the name of the virtual interface. For the physical interface, we have created the virtual interface. Mailbox Gen2 drive, we have created transaction TR and um, function new whoever don't know a system where log whoever i have not completed sv don't worry as of now just concentrate on specification specification is very important once sv uvm is completed you can go through the codes okay but as of now complete till uh, uh, theory part okay so that if you get any opportunity uh, in placements or internships you can able to attend okay 
creating the component here and then reset task and then start task see here pause it uh, task start pause it how we are accessing the clock here in the interface how we are accessing the clock means through i2c dot vi of dot clock that is what the path you need to put you cannot put directly clock because you are not declaring the clock here right you have declared somewhere and you are accessing those variables so you need to put i2c vi of clock through the virtual interface we are accessing all the dut signals okay so i2c vi of dot sda you are not passing directly to the sda you need to pass through i2c dot vi of dot sda equal to zero and this next next stop task and then write address write address means first you are getting the data from the transaction class at 45 signal 45 line and next night to edge of the clock at um, i2c vi of dot driver clock are passing the SDA data from TR to DUT. And then next clock cycle. And then write data, please go through this, read data, read address, read data. And calling all task. Task drive start method, write address, write data, read address, read data, okay? After driver, monitor so same same as a driver but a driver means sending transaction data tr data to interface data in def but here interface data is sending to transaction tr okay so that is only difference so that's why before you did you kept mon uh, driver f left side see here drive f left side and sending the transaction data to here but in the monitor all address out sending to transaction here address out sending to uh, transaction dot out here data out is sending to transaction dot out like that okay try to understand point to point you will understand very clearly okay function new within this function new what are these means connections okay for mail uh, for monitor and driver we have two connections one is a virtual interface and mailbox but for generator we don't have two connections only mailbox connection for scoreboard also we have only mailbox connection because here uh, generator to driver only mailbox is connected to generator here right but driver means one mailbox connection is there one virtual interface connection is there that's why and scoreboard also only mailbox connection but monitor means interface connection and monitor mailbox connection that's why two okay like this and scoreboard okay just want to scoreboard get off tr that means whatever the data is there in the monitor we are putting into the mailbox and getting from the scoreboard so in the top environment we are calling all the subtask generated driver monitor scoreboard creating the mailbox virtual interface and calling all the task okay preset test and test uh, calling generator main task driver main task monitor main task and in task run this pretest test calling this environment can be run from top level test this is the top level test here we are running the environment this test can be run from testbench.sv this testbench.sv is nothing but i2c slave test.v go to this and this is the main test.v okay so go through this test bench simple just uh, what is the write address what is the read address that thing have included here okay so after generating the waveform we got this here also we have taken 67 67 dd as you see here in the transaction class 
okay so please take time take today's time tomorrow is a sunday monday please take today's time try to understand each line by line okay point to point try to understand first transaction class and then interface and then generator driver monitor scoreboard every line to line wherever line you didn't understand just uh, send in the group i will explain okay don't wait till next session and don't waste time for the doubts in the session okay wherever the line you didn't understand just ping in the group i will explain okay clear everyone any doubts yeah, for yes, today's session any doubts for today's session hello Prashanti, I had a one doubt in uh, address. Yeah, tell. Address means here we are taking you like a uh, seven bit, right? Seven bit means two power seven means it will be like uh, it will having a one twenty eight uh, address bits. Mm. In that address bits, in first address we'll mention like something like error register is a uh, address is zero cross double zero like that and. Uh, uh, bus register address is uh, like that addresses will mention in that no. like uh, bus register address uh, uh, we don't have that concept here in i2c i mean in, re I mean in registers we'll having so many registers like uh, error control register bus register uh, fault register uh, like that registers will be there right okay error Error condition like this addresses will be made will be noted in the address location. Uh, here uh, with register names, huh? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, here those are common registers for any type of any type of address. We have those common registers, but particularly we don't mention those register names here. Yeah, okay. In outside the industry, you will mention everything about yeah. depending upon their uh, usage. Yes, yes. But here we don't mention any registers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But actually, address means that only we will specify, right? Yeah. Address means nothing but storing the data in registers only. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Others, Shivani, Vujwala. Divya, Ramya, do you have any doubts? Hello, hello, ma'am. Yeah, please. Your voice is not audible. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Yeah, please. Tell. Oh, ma'am, I'm telling you are using master. In test when and slave as a design like duty. Mm. So when we performing write operation at that time, we will use master in test when, and we will perform the read operation at that time. Slave we will use in test when, like that. Yeah. Slave will be the design, master will be the test venture. So from the master we will generate the test cases. So test cases in the sense test scenarios we have generated here. Uh, test cases how to generate I will show you later uh, for AHB or APB. So here master is working as a test bench. So it is generating the okay, scenarios okay. and sending to the slave design. Okay, 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 got it. Rishali, one more doubt. Here you said like starting stage, you said the uh, design is the master and the test bench is the slave, right? No, I didn't say that. Okay, here, okay, I'm thinking in a vice versa. Here, uh, test bench is a master, a slave is a design. Yes. Okay. Slave, we are writing a design using finite state mission. That's why I clearly mentioned slave FSM. FSM states for slave. 
Okay, any other doubts, others? Okay, I already shared the links in the group. So please go through that and try to go through each point and try to understand and ping your doubts in the group. Okay. Okay, then thank you all. Bye.